How much did you guys possibly? Sheila was born in a very small town in what is now Bangladesh, and uh, their family had to move out of that when the India was divided. For the illness, we were like any other, you know, normal couple with uh, daughters and grand not grandchildren. Yes, grandchildren came by that time. Yes, the illness was initially diagnosed uh, in 1996. And to be honest, uh, I almost diagnosed it myself because all I could see that some of the things she was saying, she already suffers from it. And then I asked my GP that sh should he not recommend refer Sheila to the neurologist to see what she suffers from. He first don't agree. So I said, well, why not? Why not just refer her? And if she isn't, that's fine. I don't want her to be because during her speech, seminar speech, she said dementia is incurable, which of course is not a happy thing to hear. She was referred, and yes, the, this particular lady who was the main speaker, she came to our house, and within five minutes she said, yes, she is in the early stage of vascular dementia. And I knew that, yeah. I got something in my hand, which I don't know where, how far it would go, where it would end. So, that's in 1996. We were in Luton, and well, Sheila was still physically fairly healthy. Mentally, she used to started forgetting things, and we used to have arguments because people would phone, she would talk, and then she completely forgot, and yeah. then I get blamed. I had my eldest daughter living, right, as I said, five minutes deep, walking distance. But she has three children, and the local authority is, again, they have a problem, obviously. Half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the evening. That's the amount of help that I got. The rest was, is mine, isn't it? She's my wife, and I uh, had to look after that. And initially, well, I managed. She had this major epileptic fit first time upstairs in our bedroom. And they had to send an ambulance to take her in. And she was in hospital for 25 days. And they said, no, you won't be able to look after her. And we'll, we'll send her. I said, where? So the hospital recommended a place, which is about 40 miles from here. I said, is that the place? They said, oh, yeah, no, nowhere else they can cope with this sort of illness. Now, I'm not going to she just send Sheila 40 miles away from her because in our 47 years of marriage at that time, we very rarely lived apart. And she would have, she would have then, to me, in my experience, she would have possibly died within the fortnight because there were many other problems. Regression is a fact of life for dementia patients. They go back to their early years, as did Sheila. I mean, it's not that Sheila couldn't speak English. She was very fluent in English, or otherwise she wouldn't have lived through all her experiences, you know. But um, that's slowly, she's going back to her early years. And so there are times when she would try to communicate in Bengali, which is her mother tongue. And of course, the KRRs over there they think that she's talking gibberish. And so over there, again, if she uses her fingers instead of knives and forks, oh, that's a, something which is, you know, almost savagery. So when they go to the scare home and nobody explains it to them, it then becomes somewhat, it is strange, it is worrying, frightening, because they are not, they cannot communicate easily, the food is different. People are different, and so they they just sink into a sort of solitariness, and which is which is very bad. And that's uh, Sheila's family, and.
Sketching. Well, wherever she goes, she will be sketching. So that's the all all five of them. They had five sisters there. <laughs> all of them. Maybe not too much. You know, they are, I made a decision to take her back to yeah, no. back to India. Family, yes, because of course uh, at least I got a couple of sisters, a brother, etc. Uh, but it is the caring. I talked to the St. Luke's consultant, neurologist, and he said that you, know, you don't need any more medication. There are no more medication. She needs caring. And caring is one thing which you would not get here, because caring is very costly. As long as there is this this big pool of carers available, whose only ties are the ties of love, nobody would do anything, would they? I, yes, I, I took a gamble, and I, I had nothing to lose. She was not going to live in here. They were talking about no more than three months, so I took her. She lived for nine months, eight, eight and a half months. But her quality of life improved. First six months of that was far better than she had in the previous 18 months over here. The way the, those women over there, attendants, they are not nurses, attendants really. They looked after her. Yes, not even I think I or my two daughters, we never managed to do that. We are too tired and too worried. In 2004, uh, we went, to, went back to India. She drew, she painted. And I, of course, did always encourage her there because one thing I have been advised in about dementia is you use it or you lose it. Every, every faculty, your brain, your physical faculties, use it. Don't let it go easily. And that is the job of the carer, isn't it? You got to encourage the patients to use as much as possible as much as possible. Not force it, but encourage them.